Dobrý večer, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Bohač, I am from company in Norge Česká republika. And I will be talking about our experience maybe and uh, what we learn and uh, how it worked for us with the migration uh, to, to the ADS club. Maybe a little bit information about you know, the Czech Republic. Uh, you can read the details. Uh, long story short, we are a big distributor of the, of the gas and electricity in the Czech Republic. I would say relatively high amount of the customers. We are also a member of the, of the group uh, in the, on the European market. Interesting fact which you uh, would like to forget a little later, but you will not be able to do it. Uh, length of the uh, grid pipelines uh, for the gas in the Czech Republic is roughly three and a half uh, of the length of the railway uh, in the Germany, which is useless for anyone, but uh, I think it's an interesting fact. Uh, we started with the usage and migration to the cloud I would say relatively early uh, in the comparison or for the Czech Republic. Uh, the story begin roughly in 2015. Uh, and uh, over the years, uh, we, we came across multiple situations, which I think might be interesting also for companies which are thinking about migration to the cloud or which are already in the cloud and maybe could learn from our mistakes or maybe findings. Uh, in the 2015, uh, we, or, and before, of course, as well, uh, we did have uh, classic uh, on-premise data centers. Uh, main data center was in the Brno, uh, in the Czech Republic. And uh, at that time, uh, we have been thinking about, uh, let's say, what to do next. The building was uh, old, uh, and uh, we have been also close to basically need or necessity to make a big investment into a replacement of basically everything, including like air condition and major reconstruction of the building. Uh, at uh, the time, we did have also option to, to choose migrate from Czech Republic uh, from the data center to the big data center from for the group uh, which was in the Germany uh, which was considered as one of the options uh, at the same time Inogi as the group uh, was uh, basically stating that uh, uh, we want to be innovative and uh, we want to be on the edge with the, with the usage of the of the modern technologies and uh, Czech Republic was uh, chosen as the, let's say, playground uh, for, the, for the testing if the, if the really uh, full-on uh, approach and uh, the commission of the, of the data center in the, I would say, relatively relatively, let's say, cautious uh, energetic sector would be a good idea. So in the 2015, we made the decision that uh, we will migrate to the cloud and uh, the migration started in, in 2016. Uh, for the, let's say, imagination, uh, how big uh, the scope we have uh, or what we did migrate is uh, we have few thousand uh, employees in the Czech Republic, I don't know, five, six thousand, something like that. Uh, we did have like <coughs> roughly 1,000 uh, servers. Uh, we decided to migrate most of them, or let's say most of the application servers to the cloud. Uh, to, to be straightforward, we did also chose to not migrate some servers, like let's say, uh, that there are servers for the SCADA uh, network which are controlling really the gas pipelines uh, 
uh, on the on the sites. So we didn't migrate them because they are part of the critical infrastructure for the for the whole country. So we, we didn't really uh, move this to the cloud, <coughs> but uh, uh, we did migrate really most of the of the big uh, applications, including like uh, SAP, basically whatever you can imagine. We about have it, uh, and uh, you can see that there are some some applications listed, uh, and uh, <coughs> the migration basically started. Uh, we have been at the time uh, considering uh, different approaches. Uh, as you probably saw, uh, there is some recommendation uh, how you can uh, perform the, the migration to AVS Cloud. Easiest uh, one is the uh, lift and shift, where you basically just copy whatever you have uh, in on-premise uh, to the cloud. And you do not do any re-architecting, re-platforming, uh, reprogramming, and so on. Uh, you might be thinking, and usually someone is thinking, oh, we could do it uh, you know, more advanced and uh, switch something at the same time. Uh, we chose to really do just the simplest uh, and easiest uh, way how to how to do the things. Main reason for this is uh, year before there was a smaller uh, smaller a smaller test uh, in the Inogi in in UK uh, where uh, Inogi chose to uh, be more let's say bold and they selected few smaller applications and. Uh, they also decided to replatform, change the database, and let's say make the, make it more complex. And uh, you know, she was not able to, to deliver it, uh, and it, it took them two years. And after two years, they just said, uh, "You can imagine what they said," and they and did the migration and uh, basically stayed with the applications in in on premise. So for us. Uh, we kind of like learned from this and we, we really wanted to deliver the migration to the cloud, even that it would mean uh, we will have to do the next step after the, the first really just the, the simple move to the cloud. Uh, at the time, I would say for us it was more like uh, remote hosting, uh, which might sound like uh, not a great accomplishment, but if we are looking now back over the years, uh, we still consider it like the like the big uh, big accomplishment for us, at least. Uh, during the migration, we we did uh, <coughs> hit few obstacles. Uh, the big obstacle for us uh, at the time was uh, there was no uh, direct connect available in the Prague, which is uh, not true anymore. But at the time there was uh, the closest one was, I think, VN or something like that. Uh, so we tried first to connect uh, with the VPNs. It was working, but the latency, especially for the uh, workers in uh, SAP CRM, where we have we have relatively big call center, roughly 800, 1,000 uh, people who are connected with the Cisco call manager, and it's integrated with SAP uh, CRM, uh, running in ABS in in, uh, in Ireland. Uh, so the latency was uh, big, and there was a lot of the complaints about the about the quality of uh, of, of the networking. So first thing basically we, we did need to do is we, ha we had to change from VPN to, to Direct Connect. Uh, at the time there was no connection in the Prague, so we used a uh, sub-vendor uh, company uh, GTD, uh, which was providing basically connectivity from Prague to London, where we uh, connected uh, directly to, to AWS. Uh, another, I would say, a relatively smaller obstacle uh, was uh, we, we were using uh, Snowball for the migration of the bigger amount of the data uh, from, from the on-premise data center <coughs> to the cloud. And uh, I think two times uh, uh, basically the data in, uh, in the Snowball did get corrupt and we have been not able to really restore them. 
So in the next step, we kind of like uh, went a little bit ahead and uh, didn't really fool the snowball full, but only to the half, and we made the second copy. Uh, and not in the same year, but in the 2017, when we did make another migration, it happened again, but uh, we have been able to restore it. But uh, that's why I'm saying uh, we did uh, basically uh, didn't meet, meet the uh, expected time because the snowball, uh, we have basically fulfilled it with 100 uh, uh, terabytes of the data. We send it, it takes some time, it's not working, ship it back and so on. So uh, we did, uh, we have expected to finish at the end of the 2016. Uh, which we didn't make, and uh, we finished in the first quarter of the 2017. Uh, result of this was uh, we migrated, I would say roughly maybe 60 to 70 percent of the of all servers, and like really vast majority of all the applications uh, to the cloud. Uh, there are some leftovers in on-premise, as I said, the SCADA network, which is roughly like 100 uh, uh, servers. Uh, really distributed across the whole Czech Republic. Uh, there are like roughly, I would say, every 50 kilometers, there is small, I don't know what is the English word, přečerpávací uh, stanice, where is uh, something controlling the SCADA network. And uh, then there are like servers for really call center, uh, Cisco uh, call manager and stuff like that, which we have close to the to the call center, which is uh, uh, in the Ostrava. Uh, another, another part, uh, which uh, we did have to do is uh, before the migration, but in the same year, uh, we have been running SAP on the uh, IKES. So we did the first uh, make the migration uh, to the Intel in on-premise, and then we transferred the, uh, let's say, migrated uh, SAP uh, to ABS. Now we have a small advertisement break, uh, which is again not really important for the for the presentation. Uh, in the Czech Republic, we do not have any any like power plants and, and stuff like that. In the Germany, Energy owns uh, nuclear power plants and uh, a lot of the of the things. Uh, in the 2017. Uh, the feeling in the company was like, oh, we are in the cloud, everyone is happy, everything <laughs> will be now good. Uh, and it was kind of like running, and everyone was like, like yeah, okay, it's good. Then you got the invoice. Uh, and no, it was okay. <laughs> there was no like performance problems or anything. Uh, but at the same time, people have been like, uh, yeah, we have expecting something more. And uh, we found, uh, that uh, the migration to the cloud or to the AVS uh, is only part of the of the things we need to do because before <coughs> you probably know it from the on-premise you buy the server you let's say load it to the rack you pay it and <coughs> there is no really reason to you know look on the utilization of the let's say really applications there, there is no really discussion about like making the servers smaller, the, the virtual servers. There is no really discussion unless there is a really big problem to making the servers bigger because usually application uh, owners have the tendency to oversize a little bit, a few times usually. So there is not even really any application running on 100% because uh, it will be problematic. There will be uh, lead time before they really get the more resources to increase the available capacity. And uh, it was really in the, I would say, mindset of uh, our internal people that uh, they didn't know what it could, uh, what they could do and what uh, AVS offers them. At the same time, we didn't even have like the proper internal uh, tools, I would say, and processes reporting about uh, for the applications before in the data center there was one big pile of the of the money uh, this is paid by the CRM 
this here is by, by the ISU, the Information System for the Utilities, and rest is rest. Done. Uh, now in the in the ABS we found out that we can really report based on application, production environments and stuff like that. So we did uh, kind of create the the sets of the tags. Uh, we started using something which we call like the, the business service and IT service. Uh, we really created uh, automatic reports which have been sent to the, uh, let's say, managers responsible for the area, uh, to team leads or maybe to the application owners, really the single application owners. So they started to receive regular reports which have been seeing your application costs $1,000 and this application costs whatever, $2,000. And it kind of like, at the time, everyone was like, eh. But some people started to be like interested, eh, how could I improve my application? Why my application, which is considered the small one, phone book, why the phone book costs the same as, let's say, the one application considered by the business as the oh, most critical application. And at that time, uh, we we started with the something which we uh, we internally call application right sizing and rearchitecting, which uh, I will be talking more in the details in the, in the next slide. Uh, but generically, we, we chose uh, two pilot applications, and we ran with them uh, a really process of uh, looking what we can change. Uh, without really rewriting the application, but uh, what we can change to really use options which cloud uh, brings to us. A story from this year, I would say, is uh, you cannot really expect uh, that uh, company, especially the longer time existing company with longer history, uh, will change over the time. It will require education of your people, it will require change of the processes, it will require support from really the leadership. If leadership will be saying, ah, we don't care about the money, or somehow do not care about the money, then uh, if there is not really the support from the leadership that, yes, we want to look on it and we want our people to really spend the time, then uh, like let's say from the infrastructure, uh, I, I would be not able to, to do it without the support of, of, of the, let's say, enthusiasts who are interested in their application or by the support from the, let's say, IT heads and uh, let's say CIO. In the 2018 and end of the 2017, uh, we did really have some uh, some detailed financial history because we, we, we did have like, let's say, six months of uh, how it is changing. People have been seeing like, so if I add one terabyte of the drive to this server, it goes up. <laughs> and uh, it was really like a new information for most of the application owners. Before that, they didn't have any idea because I don't know if they didn't care, no one told them, it was covered by the whole budget and it was not never really charged to exact application. Either way, uh, that was the, the situation and I am pretty sure it's the situation today basically everywhere in, in the normal data centers. Uh, for us it meant uh, uh, we we really looked on every application. We, of course, uh, chose the biggest one, not the smallest one. So we started like with SAP CRM, ISU, uh, or, or Beve uh, is uh, another uh, interesting case. Uh, and uh, we, we have been looking on, on things like, uh, do we really need uh, eight application servers? Can we have four? Uh, we have considered uh, also not really the cost only from the IV AVS side, but also cost on the operation. As uh, we did outsource uh, uh, company, uh, we did outsource the management of the, let's say, operating system and databases uh, from internal resources to the external resources. So we did consider, let's say, 
if we change from eight servers to four servers, we will also save the cost on the operation side on the on the on the operator or operator of the uh, of the managed service. Uh, we did look on uh, uh, like licensing cost uh, before or even now. Uh, there are really often application owners who say, oh, I want Oracle Enterprise. Why? I don't know. Enterprise sounds like the best option I can get. And they usually do not have really idea why they need Enterprise, because no one really looked. Same way, we did have the applications which have been using, like, let's say, uh, Microsoft SQL Enterprise. But at the end, we have been able to switch to the, to the web version, which has the huge impact on the cost. Uh, we did have also focus on uh, really uh, storage. Uh, there have been uh, servers which have allocated from the historic time a huge amount of the of the storage, tens of terabytes, where was basically garbage. So uh, we did clean up uh, in uh, in the storage area as well. Uh, we started also, let's say, uh, archiving the older data which we have to store for the regulatory purposes from the normal EPS volumes to like S3 and Glacier and so on. I, I would say no really rocket science. I would say things which uh, I would say most of the people know how to do it, but on the, on the bigger scale, on, on the on the big company, it's uh, it's relatively hard to, to obtain or achieve. I would say. Uh, we did also look on uh, uh, on migrating from EAS databases running uh, basically in the in the servers. Uh, we did have with, with our uh, operating system to RDSs, so we did have like uh, or we have now maybe sixty databases like uh, Oracle and uh, MySQL and Microsoft. Uh, well and so on, uh, which are running in uh, in the RDS. We still have some applications uh, which really require uh, databases running as the EACs. Let's say SAP, you can run it on uh, on Oracle, but SAP says if you run it in RDS, it's not possible, it's not supported. It will be working, but if you have any issue, SAP says, no, no, we will not support you. And, and so on, there, there are other applications which basically state uh, you are on your own. Uh, another interesting uh, topic uh, which was for us is uh, at the, in this year we did the migration of uh, SAP PW uh, version 7.3 uh, on Oracle to SAP PW 7.5 on HANA. Uh, the instance uh, was originally 4 terabytes of the memory. So I would say a relatively expensive one. Uh, after the maybe three months of, of work, uh, we, we basically created uh, something which is called uh, SAP near line storage, which is running on the less expensive uh, database than the HANA in memory database. It's, it's basically making the backups to, to the Oracle, which are connected, but, but slower. And we have been able to switch from four terabytes uh, uh, memory instance to two terabytes memory instance, which uh, is interesting for the let's say two viewpoints. One of them is um, if you would do same thing in the on-premise, you can, but after the change, you will have two terabytes of the memory in your server, which is great if you operate the data center because you have four terabytes of the memory which is paid and you can assign it to other servers. But uh, if uh, you're thinking about like really the financial side of it, uh, it's uh, not optimal. Uh, on the AVS, with the restart, you can change the uh, size of the assigned memory, you can change the instance, and uh, you can go down. You can, of course, also go up. So at the moment, we are again thinking due to the size of the data, uh, we are again thinking from about going from two terabytes to four terabytes because the archiving it is not making any more sense and we need to keep at least the last 12 months of the data uh, basically online for the quick uh, for the quick uh, access uh, 
it's not really part of this presentation, but we have also really interesting case about this upgrade itself. There was a like, big change in the speed, uh, like transactions which run five minutes, run <coughs> like 30 seconds, like really decrease by 95% on the selected transactions. Not on all of them, but uh, it was like on the, on the big majority of the, of the all of the transactions. Uh, uh. Anyway, it's more for the SAP conference, not for ABS. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the same time, we did also started uh, decommissioning the relatively older EMC uh, storage uh, units in, uh, in on-premise, where we have been storing uh, user profiles of the, of the single employees. Uh, we decided to use uh, NetApp ONTAP, which uh, for us was, uh, I would say, interesting. Originally in the 2017 and 16, we used uh, storage called Zadara, which is on the contrary for the Czech people, not for free. Uh, <coughs> but a lot of the, especially business people always were thinking, oh, it's Zadara, <laughs> you are not paying anything. Uh, so we, we, have, uh, we have been running the migration from Zadara to Meta. Uh, wh wh why we did need a special solution for this is uh, at the time uh, there was not possible uh, to uh, use EFS with the cross EPC replication, which is now available, but at the time it was not available. So we did have to look for some other uh, solution. And uh, this one basically allows to, to connect uh, one drive to multiple servers as we share them across multiple uh, applications. And we have also some higher requirements than EFS at the time was able to deliver, especially the throughput and stuff. But anyway, it's now changed, so it's not really uh, relevant, but at the time it, it did make sense. Uh, another interesting uh, feature or option for us uh, from, the, from the ABS, uh, which was delivered, is uh, uh, we have been able to basically run POCs or uh, so popular called rapid prototyping where you can try something and you can throw it away in, in whatever, two months because you tested it, it's not working, you just wipe it out. In the on-premise, you can do it, but you will be left with something you purchased for this uh, POC. Uh, I have been running uh, data centers in past, and usually, let's say, project buys the hardware, project ends, you have the hardware, you cannot give them back the money, so usually the, whoever paid is saying like, okay, so you will reserve this hardware for me for the future, or whatever, I will not turn it off because I paid for it, let it run indefinitely. Uh, I would say this is basically gone with the cloud because they, people do not really have the reason why to say keep it running. Results of, uh, of this uh, round of the, let's say, changes and optimization is we have been able to decrease on the whole scope of the cloud uh, for the you know, Česká Republika. Uh, by 22% uh, with maintaining the quality and uh, uh, basically same scope uh, with the roughly 20% uh, smaller cost, which was by the leadership and by the business considered as the nice benefit and everyone was happy. Uh, again, a little bit information break. Uh, Originally, uh, this was supposed to be uh, the plan for the year 2019. Uh, we wanted to finish with the, uh, with the right sizing of all the applications we had, even the smallest one. Uh, we wanted to uh, look on the replacement of the Cisco call manager with the, uh, let's say, SaaS, uh, probably SaaS. Uh, SaaS uh, uh, call center, which is called AVS Connect. Uh, we did run small POC. If you need to, uh, to run really the call center in the cloud, it seems to be nice. There is out of the box integration with a lot of the like big uh, or bigger vendors, which we use in on-premise together with the call manager. But we did run into unexpected changes which uh, 
we kind of could not predict and which has been more related to the like organizational <coughs> change on the on the let's say global scale um, originally Inogy was the daughter company from company uh, called RWE uh, which uh, kind of like uh, created Inogy by removing roughly 40% of the RWE the creating like the green daughter and uh, kept like the nuclear power plants and coal plants and so on and, and created energy where it was like the renewables <coughs> and wind uh, turbines and whatever. And in the year 2019, uh, RVE as the owner of the energy agreed with Eon that they will give them energy. They will get uh, roughly 30% of the, of the Eon back. Uh, which was a little bit surprise for the energy, and uh, so result is basically on the group uh, on the on the European level. Uh, ah, sorry, I, I did go a little bit ahead. Uh, so on the on the European level, uh, energy will merge with Eon, uh, but European Union uh, said no, no, no. In the Czech Republic, you cannot merge. Uh, so in the Czech Republic, uh, Inogi Česká Republika will, will divest, will split into roughly three uh, new companies. One of them was already sold to uh, Australian investment company. Uh, retail uh, will be sold to someone it's at the moment uh, bidding uh, in the market. And uh, something what is considered like the gas storage, where they store the gas over the summer and sell it over the winter. From some reason, it's considered a renewable energy. So uh, this will go to uh, to RE. So anyway, uh, what it means for the Energy Czech Republic, uh, we do get the option to uh, basically re-implement or redo what we already did in the past, because we are now creating uh, roughly second same landscape. The current about 4,000 people will split roughly to the half, retail and grid. Uh, the existing AVS cloud will stay with the retail. Grid will create new one, where will be roughly everything copied. So there was one SAP HR system. There will be two of them. About the same, yeah, maybe a little bit uh, less storage and stuff like that, but roughly the same. Uh, our estimates are about 80 to 90 percent of the of the double, which is of course welcome by the ABS because it will mean uh, double of the uh, double of the equipment. Uh, what what is what is good? Uh, let's say for us is uh, at the time of the implementation in the 2015-16, we did not really follow the ideal or let's say best practice. Uh, we did use one account with multiple VPCs and stuff like that, but we didn't really uh, do it properly. So now we can do it again and uh, hopefully better. Uh, here you can see, let's say, design of the ABS organization, which we already created for the, at the moment, merged uh, company. You can see there are some, some uh, let's say, accounts which will in the future go to the, to the grid. Some of them will post down go to the retail, we have some which will be doubled, like public and whatever. It's not, uh, it is just something uh, what, is, uh, what is nice. What I would say again, interesting information here is, uh, I was been present uh, in the negotiation with the telco companies uh, for the new, let's say, newborn grid. And I will not name them, but one big nameless uh, operator was saying, oh, we can do the same thing as the AVS can. I was like, okay, let's see. And uh, turns out uh, they can, but a little bit slower. Uh, it, we can now, which is like uh, the decision about the divest uh, divestion was in uh, September. So now in December, we can deploy uh, production applications to AVS with all the stuff like firewalls and everything. Uh, in the on-premise, the selected uh, bolt operator uh, will deliver the first hardware in March. <laughs> so 
Uh, it's a little bit slower. I am pretty sure they will deliver, but uh, uh, I would say it's not the same. Uh, so even for like the... Uh, yeah, yeah. There is one very interesting information there in the slide. Uh, still marked Ireland. I yes. kind of understood it in 2016. So why now if it's only for Czech Republic? Well, just wondering. At the time of 2016, there was Ireland. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have been discussing if for the new company it will be in the Frankfurt, and uh, they decided to stay in Ireland. Uh, I mean, it was really a business decision. I would say they didn't want to try. Some. I would say there was missing the boldness to move to the. We have been telling them there will be no difference. You will have the better latency and so on. That's one reason. Another reason is the stuff in Ireland sometimes is uh, earlier available. Like let's say we, uh, we have been in the hurry and at the time, which is like the, the August, September, uh, transit gateway support for the direct connect was not available in the Frankfurt, it was only in Ireland. And we have been like, oh, rush, rush, rush. Uh, so that was kind of like not really the, the bigger, big, big decision maker, but it was one of the reasons. And quite often, services are first introduced in the island. So especially if we want to really do something which is, <coughs> we could wait six months, but uh, people are kind of impatient. So that's why Ireland. And uh, from the regulatory purposes, uh, we have to be in Europe. We cannot use like uh, some external one. There are some concerns about GDPR. I'm not really, Sure, if it's really the concern, but uh, there was again security and business decision saying you have to stay in Europe. And we didn't really have the, the strength to fight the, I mean, we are in Ireland. So that's the, what, what we are doing at the moment. We did uh, really implement uh, now nice new solution for the, for the firewalls, ex external firewall, uh, LAFs. We did also implement the internal between VPC firewalls. So we, we rolled all the traffic from, let's say, VPC to, to the firewall and then back. Interesting story again. Uh, we did implement it beginning of the October. Uh, last week there was a uh, rain vent, then, uh, and AVS introduced the uh, VPC ingress, which kind of made the design again obsolete. So maybe next time with the next <coughs> split, uh, we, will, we will be able to, to switch <laughs> again. Um, so that's the, the thing I would say with the AVS, uh, the pace of the, of the changes and introducing of the new services uh, is, uh, is big. Uh, I mean, I am, I am really trying to keep up, but uh, it's not really possible. We are receiving, uh, the, we have the enterprise support with the AVS, so we are receiving as part of the support also information, really summary weekly, what is new and so on. So it's relatively easier, but uh, still the, the amount of the news is, is big. So uh, it's not really only about new services, but there are some small new changes which tune up or improve your older solution and you can start using it. Let's say that was relatively, I don't know, two, three weeks back there was change. You can now use the AVS uh, uh, saving plans, I think, uh, which kind of like make the uh, reserved instances a little bit obsolete, or not obsolete, but easier to manage, especially on the bigger scale. It's, it's problematic to, to manage the reserved instances. Uh, I think it also kind of made uh, you probably saw some third-party solutions, VMware bought someone for a few billions and so on. So I am a little bit uh, thinking they lost some money on, on the new feature here. So anyway, uh, I would say the, the pace of the innovation is big. Uh, same thing which is interesting for, for us, uh, on the reInvent uh, there was announcement of the general availability of the AVS outpost, which is uh, basically a rack with the AVS hardware. They will deliver it to your site. Uh, you provide the connectivity. 
and then it appears in uh, in your management GUI, and uh, you manage it the same way as the, the things in the remote club. For the most of the companies, it's, oh, I don't know, I, I am, it's probably too early to judge, but for us, it's interesting, we are thinking about uh, using it for replacing the SCADA, or let's say local applications, which we do not want to migrate. We, we have been thinking like, let's say, call manager, or some part of the call manager maybe could be running in this outpost, and we can then merge together really the management of the on-premise and, and the cloud into one GUI, ideally under one uh, provider. Uh, okay, so I will speed it up a bit. Uh, as I was uh, talking about it, uh, change of the company kind of changed uh, what we wanted to, to achieve. And uh, instead of the original plans, we are now working on the on the split. Uh, we still have some uh, some plans uh, to start uh, more massively using uh, EMR and uh, machine learning. We have at the moment running uh, multiple cases of the machine learning where we on the uh, customer data, uh, which we have, we can predict uh, with I would say surprisingly high probability that the customer will want to leave. So again, probably no surprise, there is some business process uh, which is hanged on it and if someone is a high probability that he wants to leave, he is contacted, he receives a special offer and uh, uh, it usually changes the mind of the person who wants to leave, which sounds interesting. Then we have uh, something kind of like internally on the organizational side, we have multiple developer teams. Mm. We have own internal people developing for SAP, for CRM, and so on. We have people developing for the web, and so on. Every one of them has own guild and own way how to manage the code. Ideally, we would like to uh, to match them together because I think it would be good. And of course, there is uh, uh, with the sale of the of the of the company, we will basically remove us from the mother from Energy Germany make us stand alone, but we know someone will buy us, so highly likely we will have to merge with someone else again. So in the 2020-21, there will be another project which will be again merged with someone else. Which is kind of leading to the, to the end of the presentation. And I think if uh, you will have any questions, we can now discuss. So, will be needed. So, which tool do you use to provision the infrastructure like Terraform, Cloud Formation, and <coughs> incorporated in the pipeline? So, we are using uh, Cloud Formation for the older, uh, older version of our cloud. And uh, we are using Ansible for the new version of our cloud, which we are creating for the for the very uh, newly born company. And uh, we have uh, some processes built by client, so that we stuff like that. But only for the new part, for the older one, it's more shady, I would say. So, but for for the older version, we are not really planning to change it because. We know even even the retail side, we are we have the budget for the reducing it uh, properly in the new retail APS. Do you have some surprises or like good stuff, or good information regarding automation would surprise you? There was some. No, no, it was. I would say working because I don't have really any issues with that. Probably two questions. Uh, first was, uh, I'm not sure if I missed the number, but was the initial scale of the migration uh, with the lift and shift uh, a you know, rough number of servers, maybe the... Uh, 500, roughly. Okay, and roughly, if you can even maybe hint at it, the, the kind of spend that you arrived at initially with the AWS? Well, I don't remember that initially, but at the moment we are on roughly $2 million spent. Okay. And the second question is part by the colleague there, uh, is uh, 
Ansible seems like a weird choice for infrastructure delivery, maybe. I'm missing something. So was Terraform considered? Or? Uh, it was. The uh, main reason for the Ansible was because uh, the vendor of the cloud operation was really keen on the Ansible and they did have knowledge and uh, we didn't want to push them to something they didn't want. <coughs> and what type of cloud do you have? Is it like public or some hybrid? Or? We have, uh, I would say, all the applications we have in the public cloud in AWS. We have some small presence in one unnamed competitor, uh, but like really small present presence, and we have, uh, I would say, like 80, 90 percent. Maybe we have in ABS. We have like five percent in, in Azure from the cloud perspective. And if I would say like cloud and on-premise, then we, I would say have like 70 percent in the cloud with the applications, and in the on-premise, like 30 percent with the questionable content, and then with the, the known content, which is like really the call center and stuff like that. <coughs> you mentioned that originally you had only one account for everything. How many accounts do you have now, and how do you split your services to accounts per state or per service? Uh, so, yes. The originally, even though at the time there was the best practice how to do it, we did it in one account which is, when we are looking back on it, we are saying like, ah, but, yeah. And uh, at the moment we have, I would say roughly 50 accounts. Uh, 50 or 15? 50. Uh, we split it, uh, uh, I, will, I will scroll it back. Uh, we have uh, basically, each of those is, is one account. And then we have here. Here are only only like two depicted production and non-production. Uh, but uh, we have also like sub accounts, like for POC and sandboxes and stuff like that. And we have them doubled because at the moment we run them together for the grid and retail. But uh, in the future we are planning to create new master, and then we just uh, basically switch the grid ones to the new master. We we duplicate the, the networking part and. And there will be two separate companies. Of course, not overlapping networks. And I mean, uh, yeah. How many people did buy on this project, or if you can even tell us how much uh, it cost? Uh, just, just the movement uh, to come. So I do not have the exact numbers. Uh, overall, we are saying the the migration was like one-to-one, one, I mean, on the cost perspective. Uh, we are saying it was a little bit cheaper, like 5% on the, on, the, on the year 2017 when the migration was finished. After the optimization, we have been able to go by the 20% in the first year and roughly about 10 to 15% in the next year. So I think, I would say, if we would compare the original on-premise with the, with the after the migration, I would say we are roughly 60-70% of the original on-premise. So now I would say it's really delivering what we would expect. I would not expect it in the first year after the migration. Uh, I, I, I understood this, but uh, if you can tell me how many new people you need, you need to hire for it or... So we didn't you know, really hire just anyone. We, 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 we chose uh, external vendor for the operation of the cloud. So the vendor was really doing migrations per application, and then we, we did the commission in the internal data center, the, the hardware, and the, basically solved the building where was the data center. And so, on. so I would say if we would count probably everything, it would be questionable. But uh, in the in the books, it was looking like okay, and I don't know. But uh, after the migration, I would say there is a really visible uh, decrease on the spending. And uh, we have the new hardware basically whenever we want. Because the, when there is the new server, uh, we can just restart, switch, and uh, it's done. Uh, we are also using like the reserved instances and stuff like that. So uh, we, we, we are able to, to decrease the, the payments. Uh, for the Czech Republic, 
uh, we we did reach roughly 70 percent of the no 65 percent of the uh, coverage for the reserve instances. Uh, the, the target the KPI for this year uh, is 70 percent, so we are we are planning to do it. On the group level, oh no, nothing. Uh, I was also uh, working some uh, some stuff for the for the cloud COE on the, on the energy level, and uh, it was less successful, I would say. Uh, other countries, especially the Germany, was really reluctant to uh, to go with because there was, I would say, no support from the leadership. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, I can ask about the. Uh, uh, which wasn't successful, what uh, the main program is If you can tell us what we should have, or uh, what, what you avoided. Uh, I would say, do not try make it too complicated. Uh, you probably saw the picture from the ABS which says lift and shift and re-architect, re-platform, recode and everything, but uh, I think it's uh, unrealistic. Especially if, if like companies running 50, 60, 70 years, there will be big, uh, uh, big delay before really the internal organizations catch up, before the processes catch up, before you have like really the, the stuff uh, ready for the, for the change. So Empower is actually the, the name of the UK daughter. It's, I think, like third or fourth uh, biggest uh, seller uh, of the electricity in the in the UK, and uh, we can after talk about what how it uh, went. I do not really want to <laughs> speak in the broad at the end, but it was not great. Let's say. Uh, yeah, I have also a question or comment yeah, regarding this uh, engineering versus uh, lift and protect the chip, yeah, because I noticed. Uh, Majority of your applications are SAP based. Yeah. Yes. And in the SAP world, you have always these two options. Yeah. You, your initial position was running SAP on prem, and option one is, uh, let's say, uh, migrating servers into cloud. Yes. This kind of little chip. Uh, another option would be migrate SAP solutions into some cloud based native SAP software packages, yeah, like S4 HANA cloud based, yeah, or VW for HANA cloud based. But in my view, this will really really involve a lot of uh, implementation and work. Yeah, so yes, it's so it was considered. Do you have any, any, any thoughts in this? Yeah, whether, whether you try to be, let's say, a little bit more ambitious or some maybe over ambitious, yeah, and convert BW 7.5 into BW cloud based, yeah, and maybe. Or uh, you were cautious and then uh, say. For the Czech Republic, we, we did really want to deliver and make it. Yes. I can, I can say there was another try after we did the BW, uh, out, let's say our way. There was the try in the Germany with the bigger one, and they did deliver it, but it took them only for that application roughly 12 months. Uh, at the same time, we did migrate basically everything. So uh, I don't know. And another option, we did consider it, another problem for us was really the licensing, because the licenses are managed for us on the group level, and uh, there was not really clear how we could uh, withdraw the licenses. And So uh, we chose the easier path, yeah? maybe not that ambitious, and, but it works. <coughs> there was no problem. Yeah, I can understand it. I think there was... Yeah, I just wanted to verify one thing regarding the organizational approach. So you're mentioning the support from the management quite a bit. And basically, you had the way where you did first the lift and shift, which usually doesn't go or uh, result in you know immediate benefits, basically. So I'm just guessing that the management support was very important for that yes. step to do that lift and shift, basically start changing the processes and actually don't get any benefits like in that first step. Well, for, for us, it was like uh, buy a new data center on premise or go to the cloud. So it was kind of like roughly the same. 
So they said, yeah, okay, let's try something new. And uh, then year after, we have been able to start delivering uh, the results. And we didn't fail, where at the same time, other internal, let's say, organizations tried to be more bold, and they failed and lost even more money. So, uh, uh, so it was kind of safe, but I would say also kind of visionary, because in 2015, 16, saying, ah, let's take everything and move it to the cloud, I would say, at the time, I would say in the Czech Republic, in the uh, energetic sector, I would say probably both the same. We have a question extending to this one. So after four years of basically, you know, being on cloud, one of the promises of cloud is, is also kind of the business transformation that you really deliver, you know, a uh, different perspective on, on what the business can do. Would you say that this is the case for your company as well, that, that you know, G business leaders, would they now consider, uh, would they notice a difference being on cloud? Can they do more right now? Or? I would say yes. Uh, in the Energy Czech Republic, uh, they now uh, really thinking about like, let's say I was talking about the machine learning. So now we have the data stored, accessible. We do not really need to uh, make some big investment if we want to try, let's say, Jupyter and whatever are all the nice new uh, new tools which, which are mentioned. So really they hired multiple like uh, data engineers, experts, uh, something. And they are now really running and, and, and trying to find new way how to use the data we have. So I would say business is really seeing it. Uh, and then I would say the second uh, big thing is uh, they kind of can predict better uh, what will happen if they change something or if they do something. Uh, I would also mention that the, the pricing on the AVS is hard to predict uh, because you basically have to try and you will see uh, which yeah, which is basically the case, especially the traffic is hard to, to predict. For any bigger uh, installations, I would highly recommend using direct connect because then you kind of limit or mitigate the risk of really running big deal on the on the test. Because from from our viewpoint the direct connect for our scope is kind of like a eh, cheap one. Uh, considering you have fifty accounts, I would be interesting to know uh, what kind of thing you're using for managing the accounts, the base level. So if you were using control tower, landing zones, baseline, you know, that kind of overview, a base tool for the accounts or some own groups. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> for the <laughs> Republic, again, I would say we now know better. It was not a good idea. But uh, so for the retail one, which we will be creating now, we will choose a little bit different approach which was already tested in the in OG in the Germany. They, they used basically pre-prepared landing zones, which are available as the I think, cloud formation and so on. So for the retail new one, we will choose different approach. Uh, so yes, uh, we used uh, something that I would not recommend. Uh, you just said the costs are a bit unpredictable. And I'm just wondering like, if, if it ever came to a point where someone in the management said, oh no, that's too expensive, or, or how we can cut it drastically, or even more drastically, like look at AWS alternatives, which are not AWS. Well, uh, so uh, I did maybe not uh, uh, say it properly. The costs are predictable after you migrate it and run it for some time. Then you know how much it will cost. But like before the migration, you can like count how much will cost the EC2 and storage and some databases licenses. You can count that. But the real, real cost, especially the traffic, uh, if especially if you would have like a lot of the customers, external customers, maybe some replications and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think anyone can exactly calculate how much it will be because in the on-premise you're running on your own lines. 
you kind of do not count the traffic. And I don't think there is any really tool how to do it. So that's the unpredictability I meant. After that, you can easily really predict. You can make the reservations. You can use the free years and so on, prepayment. So I would say you can relatively well quickly cut it to the lower price. Uh, there have been some discussions about like, oh, let's press the magic button because someone was on the presentation and oh, we will migrate to ABS to, to Azure because oh, we just press the button, it's 5% cheaper and it will just magically move from left to the right. Uh, but it's not that easy. So uh, we did have to, there was uh, once a really big decision about uh, or discussion about if we can do it and we were able to, to persuade the CFO that uh, we don't want to do it. But uh, it's more like fairy tale, I would say. Like there was not related to the cloud, but we are now splitting uh, the company. We, we own uh, some uh, some IP addresses, IPv4, like relatively big uh, big scope. So oh, there was the you know the stars in the in the eyes of the CFO. Oh, we will sell it. Uh, we will make the money. And so <laughs> I was like, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. So, um, yeah, there are some discussions always like how to cut it in half, but uh, it's not so easy because you will pay for, again, some transformation, something. You have to, you have usually a lot of the integrations and uh, maybe for some like zero, single small applications, maybe, but like if you have, especially for, for us, the SAP landscape, uh, it's a lot of the integrations. So it, it isn't unrealistic to expect you can just switch 